Good evening, welcome to you all. I'm Father John Lyons, pastor here, and we're gonna hit the pause button of busy, crazy lives and rejoice in God's love that he has for each one of us, for this couple and the family and friends that are here to share this very joy-filled occasion. Let us pray. Almighty God, hear our prayers this evening for this couple who've come here to be united in the sacrament of marriage. Increase their faith in you and in each other and can continue to bless them all the married life. We pray this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son who lives and reigns with you, with the Holy Spirit, where you are one God forever and ever. Amen. I invite you all please now to be seated for the scripture readings chosen by the bride and groom. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord God formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. Whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave names to all the cattle all the birds of the air, and all the wild animals. But none proved to be the suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man. And while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, this one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, for out of her man this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife, and the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. The response is, the Lord is compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is good to all and compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is compassionate toward all his works. Let all your works give you thanks, O Lord, and let your faithful ones bless you. The eyes of all look hopefully to you, and you give them their food in due season. The Lord is compassionate toward all his works. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his works. The Lord is near to all who call upon him, to all who call upon him in truth. The Lord is compassionate toward all his works. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts, but I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And if I have the gift of prophecy and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interest. 
It is not quick-tempered. It does not brood over injury and does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, this is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. No one has greater love than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I no longer call you slaves because a slave does not know what his master is doing. I've called you friends because I've told you everything I've heard from the Father. It was not you who chose me, but I who chose you and appointed you to go and bear fruit that will remain so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. I thought for this evening I would write a romantic poem for the bride and groom, so here goes. Love and marriage, love and marriage, go together like corned beef and cabbage. And that's as much as I got. <laughs> so I thought we might look at marriage, M-A-R-R-I-A-G-E. And I asked some of the family and friends of Blake and Lauren if they would jot down a few thoughts. I won't be naming names. Most of them are in the witness protection program, so I can't give out names. But they're very good, and I'd like to share a few thoughts on family and friends their thoughts about this evening. The first letter in marriage is M. It stands for a match. A friend wrote this. I know that Lauren would greatly, would definitively agree that Blake entered her life at the right time. He was the light at the end of a trying time, and I couldn't be luckier to have witnessed the two of them grow in love together. Lauren and Blake are ready to embrace this new chapter of their lives and I look forward to celebrating their wedding. They are a good match, and we all know that. M.A. Amazing, they're an amazing couple. Someone had this to say, they wrote, they bring out the best in each other, and you can't help but feel their infectious smiles on the faces when you're around them. Their love for each other grows stronger and stronger with each new day. 
They are each other's light. And I am so thankful that I will be part of their wedding day where their light will illumine as they say, I do, and the two become one. They are amazing individuals and an amazing couple. M-A-R, Aretha Franklin was not the only one who wanted respect. One member had this to say, I've not known Blake very long, but the short time I've known him, I do know that he cares deeply for Lauren. But one of the things I've learned that makes a marriage work is a deep love and care for your partner. I see that with Lauren and Blake. They complement each other, and I think they will continue to grow as a couple for years to come. They do have a deep love and respect for each other. M-A-R, they have a relationship with God. Another friend wrote this, I'm honored to be part of this special day and witness their marriage. Blake and Lauren show so much love for each other and for God. I know they have, that they will have a long and wonderful marriage with God at the center of their lives. I will be there to support them along the way. We know they have a deep and abiding relationship with God. M-A-R-R-I. They are in love with each other. Someone had this to say. They love each other unconditionally and they're learning to love each other. I see them, I see them making each other better people. I see that as a strength in a relationship when two people join together are better individuals because they are in each other's lives. I pray that God continues to strengthen their bond and that they will continue to grow in love as they move into this next part of their lives. And we know that they are in love and we are happy to be part of this ceremony tonight. M-A-R-R-I-A-G, they're giving people. A friend had this to say, Lord is without a doubt one of the most caring and kind, strong and loving people that I know. She is always willing to lend a helping hand, all with the sweetest smile on her face. Blake is kind, funny, devoted, faithful, but most important, he is loving to her. And so we know that they give their love to each other and that will sustain them in the days and weeks ahead. Finally, M-A-R-R-I-A-G-E. There is an excitement about this evening. And this person wrote, it is with great joy that I write about Lauren and Blake's upcoming wedding. I am so excited for their special day and I can't wait to watch the two of them join as one on their wedding date. And I know all of you that have been part of this planning, uh, certainly this is an exciting night that many people have worked hard, but we are here to celebrate and to uh, ask the Lord to, to bless them. So just on a personal note, um, we've uh, heard many, many attributes, good attributes about this couple, but I just, uh, you know, the first public miracle of Jesus was at the wedding feast of Cana. And so I would invite the two of you just to continue as individuals and now as a couple to invite the Lord into your life because Jesus was invited to that wedding. The couple and all of us as adults, we've certainly looked back on our lives and it's only after something has happened that we say, you know, the Lord was with me then. And so the couple didn't realize Jesus was working miraculously at their wedding. It was only afterwards that they find out about the water turned in to wine. So I would just encourage you, continue to ask the Lord, invite the Lord into your lives as individuals and a couple. And as you do that, the Lord will continue to make your joy complete. I would now invite the wedding party please to come forward for the exchange of vows. If the bride and groom would please come forward. We will ask the Lord to bless them in this sacrament.
My dear friends, we gathered this evening at Sacred Heart so that the Lord may seal and strengthen your love in the presence of myself and this community of your family and friends. Christ has already consecrated you both in baptism and now he will enrich you and strengthen you by this special sacrament so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so in the presence of the church, I ask that you state your intentions. Lauren and Blake, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? We have. And will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? We will. And will you accept children lovingly from God to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? We will. Very good. You're now holding each other's hands. And I ask now that you declare your consent before God and his church, and you've chosen to repeat after me. I, Blake, take you, Lauren. I, Blake, take you, Lauren. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Lauren, take you, Blake. I, Lauren, take you, Blake. To be my husband. To be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Blake and Lauren, you have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his goodness strengthen your consent and fill you both with his many blessings. What God has joined, man must not divide. If we could have the wedding rings, please, just hold them in the palm of your hand so we can bless them. Just if you will, okay, just hold them right there. Lord God, we ask that you bless and consecrate this couple and these rings. May they be a symbol of the true faith that they have in you and in each other, always reminding them of their love and their commitment this evening. If you would please take your wife's ring, if you would hold the correct hand and correct finger, Lauren. Lauren, take this ring. Lauren, take this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And if you take your husband's ring, please, repeating after me. Blake, take this ring. Blake, take this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We've listened to God's word in scripture. We felt God's presence in the exchange of vows. And so now we take a moment to bring before the Lord our personal intentions and intercessor and intercessions. For the church and its leaders, may our commitment to the gospel lead us to deepen our faith and trust in God. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For our world and its leaders, May all people be treated with the dignity they deserve as God's children. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country and those who defend it, may our men and women who serve in the military be kept safe from all harm. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are sick, lonely, or depressed, may they be strengthened by God's love and aided by friends and family. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each guest gathered here today, may they enjoy the warm company of family and friends and safe travels on their journey home. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For Lauren and Blake, now beginning their life together, may they have divine assistance at every moment, the constant support of friends and family, the rich blessing of children, a warm love reaching out to others, and good health always. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those who could not be with us today, but who are here in spirit, especially Lauren's mama and Blake's Nana and Papa, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for our family and friends that have died, especially Blake's dad, Dennis, 
Blake's grandparents, Lauren's grandparents, Papa and Granddaddy, and Lauren's Aunt Patty. May they know the peace and fullness of eternal life with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord For these and all the prayers which we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, you tell us to ask, to seek, and to knock, and so we do so in confident faith that you will respond to our needs, our prayers this evening. We pray this through Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. If the wedding party would please return to their seats. Now, my sisters and brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Lord, accept our offerings this evening for this newly married couple. By your love and providence, you've brought them together now bless them all the days of their married life. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. I would ask if you've not silenced your cell phones, uh, please to do so now. The Lord be with you. And lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, all-powerful and ever-living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you our thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through him, you've entered into a new covenant with your people. You restored men and women to grace in the saving mystery of redemption. You've given us share in your divine life through our union with Christ. This outpouring of love in the new covenant is symbolized by the marriage covenant that seals the love of a husband and wife and reflects your divine plan of love for us. And so with the angels, all the choirs in heaven, we proclaim your glory as we pray with them. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. I invite you now please to kneel or to be seated. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. 
But through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things as you make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we bring to you for consecration, that they become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice and he gave you thanks, said a blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. It'll be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate this memorial, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection, his ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon your oblation of your church recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son be filled with his Holy Spirit that we may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. Joseph, her husband, your apostles and saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for your unfailing help. And may the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. Continue to watch over Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, all of your bishops, religious and clergy, and the entire people that you've gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family that you summon this evening at Sacred Heart. And your compassion, almost merciful Father, gather to yourself all of your children scattered throughout the world. We lift up our departed brothers and sisters, all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give them kind admittance into your kingdom. And there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. I invite you now all please to stand as together we pray in the words of our Savior. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. We now come to a moment where we have a special nuptial blessing on the bride and groom on their wedding day. My dear friends, we're here to ask the Lord's continued blessing upon this man and woman. Holy Father, creator of the universe, you are the maker of man and woman in your own likeness, and you are the source of blessing for married life. So we humbly pray this evening for Lauren, united with Blake in marriage. May your fullest blessings come upon them both. May they rejoice in the gift of married love. May they praise you when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrows. May they be glad that you will help them in their work and know that you are with them in their time of need. May they pray in the midst of the community of this church and family and friends until they reach an old age in the company of family and friends and come at last into the kingdom of heaven. And we pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give to you. Lord, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace, unity, in accordance with your will, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the Lord's peace be with you all this evening. Spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. I invite you now, please, to be seated or to kneel. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away our sins in the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. For those coming forth for communion this evening, we would ask that you please just receive communion in the hand.
would invite the wedding party please to come forward. Please stand. Let us pray. Lord, we've shared this Eucharist this evening and we prayed for this couple that you've joined together in marriage. Keep them close to you always. And may the love that they have for each other be proclaimed in their lives and in their work as they profess their love for you and for each other. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I've enjoyed working with this couple. Uh, they chose for their first reading uh, the book of Genesis, and we know that each day of creation that God looked out and saw what he had created was good. But on the seventh day, uh, on the, the day he created uh, man and woman, scripture says he didn't look down and see that it was good. Scripture says he looked down and saw that it was very good. And so he was pleased with everything he created but had a, a special delight in the first man and woman and I feel the Lord's looking down tonight on this couple and say this is not good it's very good and I'm delighted to to be here it's a crazy time in our lives so we need to celebrate and uh, shake off all the corona dust that seems to settle on us so uh, it's good that you were all here and um, it's good that we are just here to, to celebrate this marriage the Lord be with you. With your Bow down your heads. We pray for the Lord's blessing. May God, the eternal Father, keep you both in love with each other so that the peace of Christ may stay with you and always be in your home. Amen. Amen. Lauren and Blake, may your friends console you. May all women, men and women live in peace with you. Amen. Amen. May you always bear witness to the love of God in this world so that the afflicted and needy may find in you to be joyous friends and welcome you. May the Lord welcome you both into the joys of heaven at the end of your earthly journey. Amen. Amen. May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our wedding ceremony has come to an end. Let us go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Mr. and Mrs. Blake Harvey, you may kiss Prince Charming, your beautiful bride. Congratulations. Congratulations.